Hey there everyone, and thank you for watching Fast Track Tutorials. My name is Justin, and today I'm going to show you how to make this stylized field in Unreal Engine 5. We're going to create our fluffy stylized grass in Blender, and we're going to create the textures we need for this shader in Substance Designer. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start with a new Unreal Engine project, and I'm going to call mine Stylized Grass. Let's create it, we don't need starter content, and I would like some ray tracing. I'm going to click on third person mode because this provides us with a really good scale reference. So right now we're in Unreal Engine 5. I would like to duplicate the map I'm looking at because it has some of the lighting, assets, and settings that would benefit us for this. So I'm just going to control C on the third person map, and I'm going to make a new folder called Stylized Grass. For starters, we'll also make a folder called Maps and we'll put it in there. I feel like calling this the same thing. Now, another thing I'd like to do before we get started is set up the other folders. And in Unreal, when you're working on an artistic project, I appreciate making textures, materials, maps, and meshes. That should be all we need for now. Let's go into the new map, and I'm pretty much just going to delete all of the meshes. If I click delete on a folder, it doesn't delete the assets. So we'll go into everything above lighting, grab it all and delete them. We'll also take these out and we'll keep player start. A lot of environment artists have built a habit of making sure their exposure is locked when working on a new scene. So if I click on negative one and negative one, it looks like we have a pretty locked in exposure. We're gonna see if negative two makes it brighter because we're working on a fun scene. Okay, so a fun tip is that in environment art, you wanna get closer to the real value of the sun which is 13.4. And so then we can go back into the post-process volume exposure. Let's make it negative 0.5. We're gonna balance it right out. So in our camera, we've set it to manual mode and this is our locked in exposure. I'll press shift two to go into landscape mode. I think I'm going to leave it at the default settings. I might take it down to 31. In fact, I'll take it down to 15 for demo purposes since we don't want to make our map too big. What we're going to do now is go into Substance Designer to set up our textures. So I'm in Substance Designer and I'm going to start a new project. We'll call it Stylized Grass Noise because we only need two noise maps to get this started. Now this is a good exercise to start creating your own stylized textures for either artistic or utility purposes. But if you don't have Substance Designer, you could always just find two random noise textures online. That's why the two I'm gonna make right now are pretty quick. We're going to start with a crease node. And the reason why is because I want some sort of texture that looks like wind. And so crease looks pretty basic, but if we start warping it with Gaja noise, we'll start warping our texture the stronger we put this at. So I'll put it at 150 and that looks pretty crazy. So then I'll start dialing it back. And what I wanna add next is a fancy node called the multi-directional warp grayscale. A very popular node when it comes to stylized art in Substance Designer is the clouds too, because of the way it messes with the textures you plug into it. If I set this to my default favorite number of 150, we can see that it starts to break up that noise. It's sort of hard to explain, but the more you play with this node, as well as the slope blur grayscale, the better you start to understand how powerful this software is. So with another favorite stylized noise of ours, the moisture noise, we can start adding some high frequency details in here because this texture is now telling it to push out with some higher frequency noises. I like that as well. And like in Photoshop, we have a levels node. This will allow us to start clamping in our texture. And I think that looks really cool as some sort of stylized noise that we can use in Unreal Engine. So for now, we'll plug this into one of the default outputs called base color. And we're going to make one more noise real quick. And I call this one the landscape noise. We'll plug this into a blend node and get another clouds too. By pressing X to swap these, we've then made this the overlay layer and we're going to set it to multiply and see if we can create a nice mixture of the two. Then I can pl plug this into another multi-directional warp grayscale and clouds two is so popular that we can plug it into the intensity input at that. We'll test it at 150. We'll see how much we want to break that up. A popular way to take even more detail away 
is by plugging itself into a slope blur grayscale with maximum samples and a low intensity. So you can see we've started inflating the shape. Then we can grab an auto levels to be able to bring out the full frequency range of this texture. So now our grays have become black and some of our lighter grays have become white. And for fun, we'll add a directional warp and maybe start swinging this texture around with the blacks and whites of this Perlin noise. If we set it to 150, we could see what it's doing. If I start lowering it and then changing the angle, we now have a pretty organic, muddy brush material. So I'm going to plug this into the roughness map. Now these two output names don't really matter, but at least we have our two noises. So I'm going to click on export outputs and we know that we want our base color and our roughness. And let's export our outputs. So I saved the project in Substance Designer and I'm back in Unreal Engine. I have my two textures exported. I'm gonna call this one wind noise, this one ground noise. Let's put them into the texture slot in Unreal Engine. Now before we begin working on our shader, we can do a little bit of sculpting on this. So with Shift 2, I went back into landscape mode. 0.3 is a decent strength and I'll increase the brush size. And I just wanna start getting some subtle hills. I'm realizing if I want the camera or our own view to be around here, then it almost makes more sense to start lifting up the background. That way we can kind of blend this landscape with our horizon. And that might require us to lift up the landscape as well. And then just take the smooth brush and take out some of the kinks. I am happy with that. And so the next step is to now create our landscape material and we will call it M Landscape RVT. We don't have to open up our master material right now, but we will assign it to the landscape. And we're also going to create two textures. If I right click to add an asset and I go to texture, I can add a runtime virtual texture. I'm gonna add one and call it T or actually RVT color. We'll go into the settings of it. We're going to crank this to the maximum values and leave it as such. Pretty much only want base color. So I'll save this and I will duplicate it and call it RVT height. Let's go into this one and we will just set the virtual texture content to, to world height. We can close that for now. And now in our editor, we understand that we have two runtime virtual textures. We need something to send a signal to these two textures. So we'll have two volumes, each sending a signal to each texture. We can add it by going to the asset menu, clicking on volumes and going down to runtime virtual texture volume. And we'll call this one RVT color volume. And we have our textures ready to select for the virtual texture. And we'll duplicate this and call it RVT height volume. And let's just get our height. So now in each one of these, we're gonna to need to click on the eyedropper to select our landscape. And then in each one, we'll also select set bounds. Now we have a bounding box that is sending a signal to these textures appropriately. We'll go into the landscape itself. And if we scroll down, we'll see the virtual textures menu. We have two textures, two volumes, and now we need two array elements. We'll get our color and we'll get our height. Now. Everything should be communicating with each other appropriately, and you'll see how much this benefits us in a stylized environment art workflow. Okay, it's time to make our shader for the landscape. We're gonna open up our master material. We're going to add two constants, and I am pressing the one key and then clicking down. That is how I add a constant value. Our specular value, I want to be zero, and our roughness value, I want to be one. We'll add a runtime virtual texture output. Let's get a node called absolute world position and you find it just by typing world position and the z value which was our height we are going to plug into the world height i'm going to get a landscape layer blend and i'm going to add four elements and what this is is basically four colors but even though they're colors i'm going to set them to height blend because i want the landscape noise that we made to be able to tell unreal that these textures should blend in an interesting way that respects a height map. But our height map is just a nice painterly noise and finding a texture sample. Let's go find not the wind noise, but the ground noise we made. Let's click it, select it, 
And instead of texture coordinates, which you might use for props, we're going to use a landscape layer coordinates. And we'll multiply that by a scalar parameter. So we'll call this ground tiling. So we're going to divide it by 1000. So that way it's, it's a lot easier for us to get the values in between 0 0.1 and 0. And this has become the UVs for our noise. And instead of needing a PBR texture set to set up our landscape, this method works really well with just some colors. So right away we could just call these layers grass 01, grass 02, grass 03. We'll press 3 to get a vector 3 node, which is basically a color. We'll right click and click convert to parameter and we'll call it grass01 color. I'm going to get a nice soft green if I can and we'll get two more. Let's call it grass02 and grass03. We'll change the hue a little bit. And maybe we'll make this one darker and bluer. In fact, we might add two more. I'm going to rename dirt, call it grass04. And then for fun, we can have two dirts. I am not expecting you to add this many layers or you could even add more because vector threes are not that expensive, but it's more about showing you how to set up a material like this in general. And now we'll get two dirt colors. Let's plug our colors into the landscape blends and make sure they are all set to height blend. And so with this noise we've made, we're gonna plug it into all of the heights. And so while the effect is subtle, we're going to get a lot more variation when we actually start painting in the landscape painting mode. We'll call this the noise that we need to use for our height map, but then we'll copy and paste it. And I want to get some color variation out of this same texture. So instead of ground tiling, I'll just call it noise tiling. And we're going to need to give it a strength. Click on S for a new scalar parameter. And I'll call it noise amount. I'm going to plug it into the multiply node. I want to plug this into a linear interpolate node. One of these could be the base colors that we've derived from here. And in the B slot, because we know this noise texture is acting as the mask, what if we use the same content and add a hue shift? We can also make sure we are clamping it from zero to one because that is how this node works. And so now it's using this texture to say, okay, you've got all your colors here and we can add a little bit of touch of extra color with this. And for some final color control, I always like to add some simple controls such as brightness. We could also put a hue shift if we want on the final element. And that way you're not messing with six colors for hours and hours and hours. Call it a basic hue shift. Let's plug that into the base color. And as well, we're going to plug it into the base color of the runtime virtual texture output. So this is being sent off to our landscape. This is being sent off to our virtual texture. And without too much effort, you've now created a very versatile, beginner friendly, stylized landscape shader. So I'm going to save it, close it and check this out. Back into the viewport for starters, I'm going to create a material instance of this. Call it the same thing with the caption MI instead of M. I'm going to replace it go into landscape mode and in the paint menu we now have our layers i'm just going to add them all one by one by selecting weight blended layer in normal i'm going to go back to the landscape material instance and i might just want to darken it a little bit and with the two noises we've made i can actually go into the alpha brush menu in the brush type settings and I might get some cool variation with that. So grass one is our base layer and let me grab grass two. And with the low tool strength, if I click around, we're gonna start getting some nice blending, some nice variation. Look at the third one, see if we can get some interesting colors out of that and lower the brush size. I might wanna change the color on that one. then some extra colors to pop with a bold blue here and there. We can even press shift to start deselecting and I'm kind of just spamming away at this. And we can lower our brush size quite a lot actually and increase the tool strength and we can start drawing a path.
I think we did this in a pretty good pace and now we'll hop into Blender to start making our grass cards. <laughs> 